Once you've done your due diligence in deeply researching both heliocentric and geocentric cosmologies. Well, here he is again, it's good old Eric Dubay with his extreme confidence mixed with utter incompetence. Here again to say some silly things at us in an attempt to discredit you know, reality. And what's depressing is he's still got actual fans who watch him and agree with all of his inane and insane ramblings. Oh well, Flerick. What totally proves Das Flat Boys or disproves the glob actually today? Also, deep research, I would be f***ing astounded if you even know how to research a topic, let alone that you actually did any. The idea that Earth is a globe, tilting, wobbling, and spinning, with magical, bendy oceans. Nothing magical about them, Eric. Just good old-fashioned physics, my dude. And a model of reality that accounts for that and many other feats of reality that is still, of course, subject to change with new information that, generally speaking, only makes that model more reflective of how the everything works and not less. Unlike the Flat Earth model, which doesn't exist. There are only lots of explanations for the everything, all of them contradictory to each other and unable to explain or achieve anything of actual value. I wonder why that is. And upside down people in Australia. You know, Dumbe loves to say, hey, we flat earthers don't believe X silly thing they say we do, and yet is happy to use nonsensical arguments that no one is making against the Globers TM. No one thinks that people in Australia are upside down, you know, except for Bruce, but he's special, leave him alone. The rest of them are as the right way up as the rest of us. It's just that you refuse to understand what up means in relation to a planet and or a universe. Maybe we would stop making fun of you if you could prove that you actually understood a damn thing with your deep research TM that you totally did, honest governor. Soon becomes the most absurd and far-fetched concept. The shit that you made up about the science is stupid and absurd, say it ain't so, Duberic. Are you telling me that if you misrepresent the things that science has shown us about the universe and start making up bizarre straw men that no one believes, that will sound silly? Amazing. Although, somehow, try as they might, they never seem to be able to make even their actual lies sound more stupid than the things that they believe. It's quite the achievement. You start to wonder how you could have ever believed it in the first place. Well, you see, Eric, a mummy science and a daddy science fall in love, examine reality, and then base their explanations on the evidence they find, instead of their basic assumptions and the flawed data that their crappy senses can provide. And that's where new science comes from. And then we teach it, and the people who learn will then go on to do more good science and make things that work. Remind me of the anything that a flat earther has achieved aside from scamming idiots into thinking that they are smart people with brains, or making terrible fucking memes. The main reasons are because everyone else around you unquestioningly believed it. Unquestioningly? What are you, high? Most people are taught science when they are kids. I assume that is your point. But have you met children? Those little f darlings questioning everything to the point where it can drive you a little bit crazy. And one of the main ways it is said that a person has a complete understanding of a topic is to be able to explain it to a five-year-old in a way that they can understand. This information is available, and the fact that you don't understand it, even with those explanations available, says more about you than it does about the five-year-olds learning it. And it was originally introduced to you around the same time you were being introduced to Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. That comparison is so stupid and off the mark that I am completely unsurprised that you made it. Kids stop believing in the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus often before they even make it into the double digits of age. Because everyone knows they are literal fairy tales. And there is nothing backing up their existence other than stories that we tell about them. The fact that the Earth is a globe is something that can and obviously has been thoroughly tested. And continues to be tested to this day. By the very science and technology that only works and makes sense because it's that shape. Again, Flat Earthers, please, I dare you to make something like an accurate GPS or accurate Full Earth 
weather tracking or any of the other things that we can do because we know what size and shape the planet is and how gravity functions. It should be simple. You're smarter than everyone else and those idiots figured it out. You do it too and better and then you'll finally get to be the big brain smart guys for once. Cartoons and imagination were your reality at the time. And imaginative cartoons like these Earth Globes capture and captivate children's minds. Assuming those are what you claim that the creators of them are claiming, because I don't know, it's often the case that what you present as look what they said slash did is often wildly different than what a particular image represents. Probably because of how honest you are. We will say that these are all photos of the Earth. Well, how could they all be different? Because everyone knows that cameras have no focal lengths or different specifications or different abilities in their color reproduction and so on and so on and so on. The fact of the matter is it would be far stranger to have these all appear exactly the same, that's what would be suspicious. Of course, everything must be suspicious when you can't even comprehend basic facts. As if under a stupefying spell, many adult children steeped in confirmation bias become flat earthers and genuinely believe that making memes that omit important details about what the person said count as evidence, and that if the experiments they do don't get the results they want, then they must be ignored, lest they admit they were ever wrong about their stupid fucking beliefs. Can't have that. We have books to sell. Unwilling or unable to exercise true skepticism, True skepticism isn't deciding that everything that we have done to advance our understanding of the universe is fake because you looked outside your window and thought, but it can look flat. That's actually the opposite of skepticism. True skepticism starts at trying to disprove the things that you think you understand instead of trying to find ways, any ways, to keep believing the things that you want to believe and only believing that which is actually true remain forever duped by NASA's Freemasonic charade. Ah, the Freemasons, words that you can just throw out there to immediately have credibility with people who couldn't even spell the fucking word. Then you just call everyone who isn't a complete moron sheeple and scrawl the words wake up and the matrix on a nearby wall and continue being the most insufferable asshole to everyone that you know until you have alienated everyone in your life and then you probably blame, I don't know, insert ethnic group here for all your terrible life choices. Words are produced by spelling. Ah, uh, what? That's um quite the segue. He segues by not doing it at all, I guess. And no, words are produced by people making them up. The spellings come after that most of the time. In fact, some words have multiple spellings while still being the same words. So more of Derek Ebay's meaningless sophistry. You know, it's astounding to me that even silly people would take this jumped up clown costume seriously. And magic is produced by spells. Oh, you see, this word and this word are spelled it the same. So they now have the same meaning in modern parlance because I decided and I'm not a fucking Fruit Loop. Therefore, Earth am flat and I am not an excessively smug dumbass. Words are truly magical. They am when I userize them. Non someone's has did the ubiquitous elegantarianism of my speecherification. That I does. Because my gob is that of the divinerousness. Cause my education is such that over here and should help other countries. In the original sense of the word magic, meaning to influence people by using hidden natural forces. Assuming that you are correct, that's not even close to the meaning of the same thing. Spelling is smashing letters together to form words that people can understand and communicate with each other in a way that is recognizable as the sounds that come out of people's faces, but like in written format. And while words can influence people, that isn't their only purpose by a long shot. In fact, the first words would have been things like food, or danger or shit sir sick got into the whiskey again it would have been about survival not trying to trick people into believing nonsense we had to wait for religion to start doing that sing the words we choose how when where and why we speak them all have various effects on people and events around us 
to a degree, but only if there's other people who listen to a damn word you say. I imagine in your real life, that would be not exactly a high number, which is why I would imagine you then found and subsequently never let go of your place as a king of the idiots. Just smart enough to trick dumbasses into listening to you, but nowhere near smart enough to actually, you know, actually demonstrate anything. But that's mostly because the things you say are fucking gibberish. Just like casting a spell. Cursing, for example. The fuck did you just say? We don't use shitting curse words on this cocking channel, you sack of crap. Oh wait, I suppose we do. But uh, we don't use them in the magic way. But that's only because curse words aren't magic. You know, because magic is stupid and you can't literally ruin someone's life by saying the words hecking darn it at them. Curse words are negative spells, which can be mentally or emotionally scarring for some. Yeah, but only if you're that person who came into the pub when me and my friends were drinking, took massive offence to us saying words like dickhead and fuckface. But I don't know if they knew that I didn't give a single solitary shit, and maybe if you want to go somewhere where people don't use words that make you big sad, a building full of drunk people would be a little bit lower on the list of choices. Maybe start by going to church, you miserable asshole. Or, you know, some anecdote a little less specific than that, I guess when cast with enough intention and intensity. Not really. The people who bless them and their ability to keep the saying of swear words hilarious don't tend to give much of a flipping shiz whether you scream the C word at them in their face or you're the other side of the room talking to someone else and get very irate that you dare to use language that doesn't hurt anyone who isn't intent on being hurt by it to someone else who is absolutely fine with it. At no point recognise the irony of shouting at strangers whom you shouldn't be eavesdropping on. On. That might make you the bad guy. Nah, couldn't be. Even to write, W-R-I-T-E, is a homonym of write, R-I-T-E. Idiot. He doesn't even know how to spell right right. Right is spelled R-I-I-G-G-G-H-T-T-E Batman symbol. Right? Or does he mean the other right? As in Phoenix Wright, the greatest attorney that ever lived. When I have to say, objection! You spelled it wrong again, you damned fool meaning a sacred ritual or solemn ceremony. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? And don't give me any of that I didn't let you finish crap. We all know you're so smart that you can communicate all your ideas in one go with a very loud sustained yelp. Or was that just a dream I had? The word grammar actually comes from the Latin word grimoire, which means a book of spells. As far as I can tell, you have that literally backwards. Grimoire comes from the French grammaire, not the other way around. Now all we got to do is figure out whether he switched it up to make whatever his stupid point is better, or if he fucked it up because of how dumb he is. Or, you know, both. Oh, come on, it's definitely both. Therefore, to spell a sentence quite literally means to sentence someone to your spell. Therefore, the earth is flat because words. And that's not an extremely stupid thing to imply. And, you know, just because sentence, as in a string of words, and prison sentence, again, being homonyms, doesn't fucking mean anything other than that they are words that sound the same. This is just classic conspiracy theory brain rot. Pattern seeking and then assuming that it all goes together because it has to. To mean whatever ridiculous shit that you need it to. Would you please just stop? It is exhausting. There are serious subconscious, emotive, and even propagandistic consequences to the words we choose to spell into existence. Yeah, I mean, you could make a bunch of people believe a load of nonsensical, unscientific bullshit instead of the actual factual facts about the world and the universe it sits in, and attempt to set our cumulative knowledge back by centuries, if not multiple millennia, just so they and you can sit around as armchair scientists, genuinely believing that you know something everyone else doesn't, when in actuality, you know significantly less than even me, and I am a well-known sexy idiot. Adding an S before a word turns it into a long, sharp weapon that can kill. 
No, adding a letter to a word makes it a different f***ing word, you galactic shitwit. You could do this all day, but it doesn't mean anything other than you are far too busy playing f***ing Scrabble with yourself instead of trying to demonstrate how anything you believe is true and is actually factually accurate, or trying to disprove things that you think aren't with anything other than saying, oh, it's ridiculous because I said so. But to be fair, that is your entire shtick. What else do you have? Or by adding an L inside, you can create a whole world from your word. Ugh, it's like listening to fucking spirit science, yet somehow even less tolerable. And even if everything you said here actually meant what you are pretending it does, that wouldn't mean you weren't immune from using this against your own followers. It wouldn't mean you weren't the one magicking a bunch of people into believing things that aren't true for your own ego, and no matter how small but still existent, semblance of power. The Bible even goes as far as saying in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Heh, <laughs> good point. All this time they were trying to point out, this is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to persons or deities, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. And also they have a small penis. It's so obvious now. George Orwell's 1984 also illustrates the importance of words, with his concept of newspeak. Did you call it newspeak? And of course, 1984, the conspiracy theorists' favourite. Never once realising that many of the ideas they believe prove them their they are are out to get you are exactly what they are doing, changing words and science to meaningless nonsense in order to trick people into buying absolute garbage. Like say that the earth is flat, even though it obviously fucking isn't. Huh, weird whereby simplifying and removing certain words from common usage works as a type of mind control. Oh god, it's not that he doesn't realise, dude, you know, that it's supposed to be a bad thing, right? 1984 isn't a fucking guide for life, it's a warning against, oh I don't know, people who would want to make it so that we can't even use the word globe to accurately describe the shape of the earth. Absolutely shocking that you would actively be trying to ruin language and effectively mind control everyone into believing as you apparently believe. No wait, the other one, exactly what I would expect from a dishonest piece of trash. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-